In this video, I'll be going over how to create alphas for hair. Uh, so first off, let's go over how to create the custom brush. So I'm going to go new. I'm going to make myself a, a 64. Actually, let's do a 128 by 128. 72 pixels per inch brush. Um, in here, I'm just going to create uh, some splotches and uh, dashes, etc. Just randomness. So I'm going to go in here change my brush to any of these. Um, the harder the brush, then the harder your line is, the softer your brush, the softer it is. So I'm going to find one that's kind of in between, not too hard or too soft. I'm going to go inside and create little uh, nicks and so forth. Um, there we go, just stuff like that. I'm going to go inside and erase some of, some of this. Seems like my drivers aren't quite uh, working the way I'd like it to. Uh, so I'm going to trim down some of this. Uh, just this way it makes it a little bit more random and uh, some of my lines can be a bit more tapered. So let's get some of that in there. Maybe I just need to turn on some of my dynamics. Let's see, is it working now? Go in here, shape dynamics. Okay, I have it working. I'm going to tr turn both of these on. In shape dynamics, pen tilt on, transfer, pen pressure. The shortcut to uh, open the brush properties dialog is just um, uh, F5. So let me do that again. I'd rather have uh, there. So let's keep that and do this as a pen pressure setup. I just want to have some random marks that uh, vary between thicks and thins. So you have some thick ones there, streaks. Etc. Uh, try not to do lines like this because it might cause a very th thick strand across unless you want that feel. It's all kind of random, nothing uh, too much. Um, this gives me some very thin strands if I want. So with this I can select everything, go to edit, and define my brush preset. And go here, I'll call this hair. Um, from now on I can uh, paint like in a new file or something using 512 by 512 here. And if I paint, you'll notice it just kind of drags. Why did I use resolution? In case I decided to, I needed to paint at a very high resolution. Um, I would say uh, make sure uh, you paint on a different layer than the main. So I'm going to uh, undo until that goes away. Go make a new layer here. I'm going to open up my brush properties again. If I go to brush tip shape and go to space, and I can take this down to um, one. If I wanted to, I can also change the way my brush is by rotating this little profile around whichever way I want. And this can change how your hair strands work. So I recommend trying to find you know, yourself a, a good angle that gets yourself a lot of strands. Next, I go to shape dynamics, and I'm going to set this to pen tilt because I like how this works more. And transfer, I'm going to turn pen pressure on. This allows me to give that type of stroke. So I'm going to delete all of that. If I make this smaller now, I can make myself some uh, interesting little hair strands, how I paint that. So my recommendation is just painting this I, either with pure black or whatever color you want. If you like having a blonde hair or something, you might want to start with uh, your base color. Maybe paint some of that out there. There's your strand you have. I find it easier painting this way so I can see what's going on. I uh, can probably add some darks inside. So vary it up a bit. And again, I can add even darker colors in, inside the mix. When creating hair, you only start off this way. I would recommend going back and really, really refining uh, the colors. So uh, now that I have the thicker strands, I might go inside and get the more finer ones in between. Uh, this makes it a little bit more uh, dynamic and more interesting. Get that in, the darker tones inside. And don't just leave it to just darker shades of uh, whatever color hair that is. I can vary this 
add some oranges into the mix some brighter uh, less saturated tones vary your hues vary your uh, tones saturations uh, levels and etc uh, to really paint out that uh, hair color you want so I'm gonna get some of the really dark ones in there that I've been losing out on uh, let's get some oops I'm gonna undo that one Even get some highlights in there if you, you want some of that. But the whole point is you're just trying to randomize um, these colors. Uh, highlights probably don't want it that way. So I still want it yellowish. Or even an orange one. And once you go inside, I recommend also finishing it off with uh, single strokes in, in between get those more interesting ones inside uh, probably with a lower opacity and uh, let's change my settings again so now I have uh, these actual strands coming in make it a lot more unique because if everything is just based on those brushes it never looks quite right you really gotta go in there and with these little extra strands the little loose ones at the tips I'm going to paint those in. At this point, you pretty much have a palette up here. And just hold Alt, dab some of these, and get some of those extra strands toward the tips so they don't look so uh, boring. Really getting in there now. Uh, you can probably grab some orange ones. Get some of those strands in there too. And getting in there, getting some of those little shadows. This lets you see the different layers of the hair that's kind of overlapping each other. I don't like how this tapers off, so I'm just go back with an eraser with my own little settings. Do the same thing. This time in reverse. So let's make that much smaller. Maybe a lower opacity. Start bring those in so it doesn't look so messy and once you're at a point where you're fairly satisfied my recommendation is getting the background color to look generally the average of all these tones so for now I'm just going to dab one of these colors inside probably this um, blonde right here I want to fill this whole background with that color this way so whenever it fades off it's still roughly the same color that you have. Uh, if you didn't have the right color, you can always go and uh, change your hue saturation to get the color that's more fit for your hair. So if I go here and just alter it a bit, I'm pretty good. I have that now. I'm going to hold control, click on this box here, the one with my hair actually painted on. Go to channels, and there's this button right here. This will give you a new alpha channel with your hair strand on it. It's important you have this to take it into Maya or Max, uh, depending on whichever program you're using, it's fine. I'm gonna, now that I have this, I'm going to save this out. So file, save as, Targa. And I can just call this hair. It's very important that you have this alpha channel. Uh, for those who didn't uh, follow it the first time, uh, I'm going to go over that again. Again, it's 32-bit, I'm going to save it create this channel for those who weren't able to follow along in layers I hold control I click on this box go to channel click on this button here and I get an alpha channel you turn it on and see how everything looks and then save it out and make sure you check 32 now if I go back to Maya polygons I can create a plane now I'm going to turn off the grid so it's easier to see 
And I'm going to open my uh, Hypershade perspective. So. Here we go. I'm going to use a Lambert and apply a new one. And let's add it to our color. What's the cool thing is because we use a target, normally it actually knows the difference between these and it'll attach the alpha channel straight to the transparency. So if we go in here, click File, and go to Image Name, go look for the image. Make sure you press 6 inside your viewport to see it, and there it is. There's my hair with the alpha channel applied. What I recommend for people to do is to um, create these little planes, uh, lay them out, that we can create hair. If I go in here, I can change my polyplane to 1. I can change how I wrap this. You can always do your UVs afterwards if you really wanted to. If you didn't like the fact that you laid it down diagonally, you can always uh, lay several strips vertically. And that's why I typically recommend is have several of these just uh, listed vertically, and you just lay your planes however you need inside. Um, that'll create some really uh, great looking stuff. So now you guys know how to essentially create an alpha map, create hair, paint it, uh, save it out from Photoshop, load it inside Maya. So if you're using men mental ray to render, there's a slight problem. Alphas have a little pr uh, trouble uh, rendering in mental ray. Let me load up my plugin for that. If I go to Maya to MR and load this, you see there's a slight problem. Come on, it takes a while to load. So it's a fairly slow machine. Mental ray, I'm going to set my quality to max. And ever since uh, version 2011, it's always lagged a bit getting to the qualities out. I'm not entirely sure why, but it does. So mine to production here. If I render, uh, you'll still see the, you should be able to still see the plane back there. Oh, this time I actually looked out and it worked out properly. Normally there's a problem with it uh, where it doesn't recognize the alpha. And when that does happen, your fix, you go in here in your color balance is to connect the transparency separately and when you do select the transparency separately you want to go under um, the file node under color balance and turn on the uh, alpha's luminance uh, this will allow you to um, load up a texture separately the one that looks just like the alpha as your main image and you can load that right there as your uh, texture but I typically just use a targa and it works great um, it reads those alpha channels uh, if you have several of these laying on top of each other you get a, a very great look I'd say you know vary some of these up a bit and you yourself a you know great hair look uh, but as always um, when dealing with hair I would say create a plane first, have that textured, and then play, lay, lay that on the head. Uh, don't try to lay all the planes first and unwrap it afterwards, you'll regret it greatly. And that's the end of this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask.